So that's really what I've now moved into largely. I still, I still see um, a lot of new patients. So over a hundred new patients a month, but the large majority of what I do, do now is to try to educate, try to educate practitioners and patients alike about what the, the role that dentistry has to play in their overall health. And so that's why I'm excited to be able to share with you today as well. All right, let's see if we can get this to go forward. Okay. This is really the title or the, the overall concept that I want to share, that oral infection equals chronic disease. If there's something going on in the mouth, it is going to contribute to disease. Now, the interesting things about the symptoms that we struggle with, so myself, my symptoms, numbness, brain fog issues, memory problems, gut issues, they are simply the distress signals that our bodies are sending out because of bigger root issues. The symptoms are important to pay attention to, but we don't just treat the symptoms. We want to find what is the root cause. Dentistry may often be a cause or a contributor of health and wellness issues. So this is an interesting thing. The large majority of dental problems or the large majority of chronic health issues have at least some basis in the mouth. There was a study that showed what they did is they took people who had actually died from a heart attack. They took the clot that had killed them, biopsied it, and what they found is that 78% of those clots had mouth-specific bacteria in them. What that tells us is that 78% of those heart attacks and strokes are due to something in the mouth. Again, is it the only cause? Of course not. But there is a, cont a contribution from the mouth in those situations. Research has showed that one or more root canals equals a two times increased risk for heart disease. We're going to go through why in a moment. Cancer, a two and a half times increased risk if you have one root canal tooth. Again, we're going to go through why. Diseases that research has shown to be related to dental disease. You can see all of those listed. This is not me just telling things that I've, I've seen in practice. This is research-based. Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, anemia, arthritis, diabetes. Do you have any of these? You know, do you know anyone who struggles with these things? High blood pressure, IBS, metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis, low birth weight babies, prostatitis, pulmonary disease, lupus, cerebrovascular disease, which is a stroke, and many, many more. These are all things that research has been shown to relate to dental disease. This is one of my very favorite books. And the reason it's one of my very favorites is, well, it brings up a lot of this information. However, I believe the author gives a lot of credibility to this information for two reasons. Number one, if you look at who wrote the book, it's called Hidden Epidemic. It was written, I believe, in about 2019, 2017, perhaps, somewhere in that area. Um, the author is Dr. Thomas Levy. He's an MD, but he's also a JD. Now, if you're familiar with JD, what that means, that means he's a lawyer. The reason I love that is because he's not going to say anything in this book that he cannot back up legally, which means research-based. His quote in this book is, nothing else comes close to having as large of a negative health impact as undiagnosed dental infections. This is coming from an MD, not a dentist, an MD that is saying only things that he can legally back. Nothing else comes close to having as large of a negative impact as undiagnosed dental impact infections. That's huge. So let's talk about this. We already did a little. Is dentistry the only thing that can affect your health? Well, no, obviously not. This is the bucket concept that I talked about. Oftentimes there'll be environmental issues. There'll be structural problems. There'll be metals and toxins and infection from many different sources. On the health side, what do we do? We change our diet. We change our lifestyle. We add supplements. We do all the things that you're learning about on this, on this program. You have to do enough on the health side and remove enough on the disease side to tip the balance back to the health side. The body is an incredible, incredible machine, and it will heal if given the opportunity. But if there's enough on the disease side, it can't. So let's talk about how dentistry is a huge impact on that disease side. This is an interesting thing. You can look this up online if you look up a tooth organ meridian chart. 
The best way I have to describe this is the body is wired in many different ways. We understand this. We know that we have an entire network of blood vessels in the body. We know that we have an entire network of nerves in the body that runs top to bottom. We know we have an entire network of lymphatic drainage systems in the entire body as well. But I don't think we talk a lot about the fact that we actually have an electrical system in the body as well. This is how our brain, our brain functions. This is how our heart beats. When we die, you see that flat line. Well, what are they measuring on that EKG? What are they measuring? They're measuring the electrical activity of the heart. In EEG, they're measuring the electrical activity of the brain. There's electrical activity that goes through the heart, the brain, the muscles, through the entire body. And that's literally what life is. When we lose that electrical conduction in the body, we die. Well, interestingly enough, the entire body is connected top to bottom electrically as well. All the organ systems are connected. And as I describe this to people, we we don't think about it, but it makes sense. When your phone is dying, when your computer is dying, what do you do? You plug it in and it recharges. How do we recharge us? How do we recharge our bodies? Because we are electrical beings. We have to have those electrons moving through our system to keep our brain and our heart and our muscles moving. How do we recharge? Well, there's a couple of ways. We recharge through food. Food brings electrons to our system. We recharge through muscle movement because muscle movement actually activates electrons to move as well. But there are also pathways, electrical pathways throughout the body that do receive input or charge. These are called meridian systems, and this has been researched for centuries. These are the acupressure and acupuncture points that many practitioners have used in many medical methodologies throughout, throughout centuries of time. These have been mapped. This is research-based. This isn't just somebody going, ah, I think there's something going on here. No, this has actually been mapped, and we can record electrical output of these different electrical lines. Just like you can, uh, an electrician can go to your breaker box and can measure the output on each of those electrical, those electrical circuits, we can do the same in our body. We can actually measure the electrical output in these circuits. Well, the interesting thing is, is that there are maps. There are kind of breaker boxes in the body where we can access these circuits. They are hands. So every organ system is represented by a point on the hand, and we can access that, that system to measure what's the, what's the electrical activity in that system on the hands. The feet, you may have heard of foot zoning. That's what they're doing is actually activating those different, activating and assessing those different electrical circuits through the feet. There is also a map on the ears, which is interesting, and in the teeth. Now, as I've thought about it, I've thought, well, this makes a lot of sense from a charging standpoint, because how much activity do our hands get? All kinds of activity. So we're in essence charging as we're using our hands and, and uh, putting pressure into these points. Feet. How much activation do the feet get? Well, of course, a ton as we're walking. We're activating each of these electrical circuits and recharging. Teeth. How often do you put your teeth together? People will say, oh, it's just when I chew. No, actually, it's every time you swallow, which is a thousand times a day. So a thousand times a day, you're recharging your system through the teeth as well. Well, the same thing exists in these teeth electrical circuits as exists in an electrical circuit in your home. If there is a short, something that shorts the line between the source point of electricity and the end point, it will short everything else on that same line. So I always talk about, let's say, you know, the lights that are on right now in the room I'm in and the electrical outlet that I'm using on this computer right now. Those things are on one circuit. Well, if that line is cut somewhere along that circuit, if something shorts that line, let's say I plug in three Instapots. I've done this before. <laughs> it trips the breaker. I already know this answer. It will trip it, and everything on that line will not work the same way. The same thing happens with the mouth. If there is a short that exists in the mouth on one of these lines, based on one of the teeth or one of the areas in the mouth, if there is something there, infection, metals will also short a line just like you can't put uh, a metal is very conductive. So it will change the conductivity of these electrical circuits. If you put metal in the middle of the line, it will block it. So metal, infection, even a missing tooth will affect the electrical conductivity of everything that's connected. So let's just you look at this for just a moment. You can see the front teeth are related to kidney and bladder. I have, I've had a really interesting kidney bladder and liver gallbladder really are these front teeth here. 
really interesting story once with a gentleman. He came in as a new patient and I'm pretty blunt, but I'm also, you know, I'm going to be very kind in the things I say. But as I sat and spoke with him, I just kept thinking he's orange. (laughs) He, He looks orange. So it was later, later in the visit. And I just said, I'm so sorry, but I've just, I just have to mention, has anyone ever said that you're orange? And he said, oh yeah, all the time. People ask me, do I use self tanning cream? Because he was, he was orange. He looked like he took self tanning cream. And I said, well, do you, do you use self tanning cream? He said, no, I don't use self tanning cream. Why are you orange then? I said, I don't know. We looked on the CT scan. What we found is that he had hit his front teeth and he had root canals across all of these front teeth. He was chronically jaundiced because he had shorted out the liver circuit because he had a root canal on these front teeth and he had infection around them as well. He was chronically jaundiced. His liver could not work properly because of the infection in the mouth. He was blown away. We were blown away by the fact that he was walking around orange all the time, but we see so many connections. So front, liver, gallbladder, kidney, bladder, middle is going to be lung, large intestine, and breast. Breast is huge for these middle teeth for women and men, but lung, large intestine, spleen, stomach. So this is often gut function. That's going to be bicuspids and molars. That's also breast function, pancreas. That's all going on in this in this part back here. The very back teeth, which are the wisdom teeth, are related to the heart, small intestine, circulatory system, and endocrine system. What is the endocrine system? That is the thyroid, the adrenals, the all the sex hormones, infertility, all of those kinds of things are related to that area as well. 